of guests. It is now time for member statements. The member from Sarnia Lampdas. Yeah, <laughs> Algon Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, March is Pharmacist Awareness Month. It's a perfect time to celebrate the important part pharmacists play in our health care system. This year, the Ontario Pharmacists Association has encouraged everyone to know your pharmacist. Pharmacists are the most accessible health care professional. The majority provide services and consultations without the need of an appointment. This government needs to utilize the abilities of pharmacists and expand their current scope of practice. Pharmacists are willing and able to work with this government to find cost savings in the health care system, and this can be derived through an expanded scope of practice. Pharmacists are an integral part of our health care system. We should be using their abilities, knowledge and community connection to create a collaborative, cost-efficient health care system. For the second budget in a row, this government has announced that they may expand pharmacists' scope of practice to include travel injections. This government has been big on announcements, but very slow on action. I have been a pharmacist for over 20 years, and I'm proud of my profession. It's a pleasure to stand up here today to recognize the great work of pharmacists across the province. I encourage everyone to take a moment to celebrate and get to know your pharmacist. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member for from Parkdale High Park. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've seen this before. OSBCA was going to euthanize 100 dogs just because they had ringworm. Uh, we fought them. We won. And now they're going to euthanize 21 dogs who are the victims of a dog fighting ring, uh, despite evidence to the contrary and adoptive families all over the place who are willing to take them in. Michael Vick's dogs, we remember, were all rehabbed but one. Uh, and it's because of this draconian breed-specific legislation that this government still insists on uh, upholding that that's coming to pass. Legal challenges abound. But it's not just dogs, Mr. Speaker, it's lions. A lion was shot as well by an owner of a roadside zoo, because why? We have absolutely no oversight over roadside zoos, and this government, again, has overlooked two private members' bills, two and counting, uh, about that very fact has done nothing. And uh, Kiska, the orca, is still at Marineland. So uh, from, from this side of the aisle, all I can say is, Mr. Speaker, uh, we, somebody has to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, and if that falls to us, and we're proud to uphold that in the New Democratic Party, uh, because uh, absolute, uh, absolutely uh, there's a home and there's place for every animal, and being euthanized as victims of a dogfighting ring is not the way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Member Sings, the member from the Republic of North. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I have the Thank you. Of alerting my own residents uh, in Etobicoke North, and I know that my mother is watching right now, as well as my youngest son, who is two and a half. So a salute to them. Uh, I alert my colleagues and uh, residents and family members and everyone, uh, the great supporters in Etobicoke North, of the impending excellent newsletter that is about to be mailed to uh, 50,000 residents. Uh, in my riding. I'd like to first of all thank my excellent staff, Peter Murphy, Costa Chialtis, Palvinder Sanghera, for their help in compiling uh, the many, many facts that are embedded in this newsletter, which include highlights from the budget, particularly of interest to my area are the, the free university and college tuition for families uh, earning income annually of $50,000 or less. This is, by the way, Speaker, part and parcel of the $90 million infrastructure project that we just uh, authorized and uh, celebrated at Humber College North Campus. Uh, we have many other items. Uh, of course, as you'll know, Speaker, we have as part of the $1.2 billion expansion of the Finch LRT, eight, count them, eight new stops coming to the great riding of Etobicoke North, and they are Humber College, Highway 27, Westmore, Martin Grove, Albion, Stevenson, Kipling, and Islington. Speaker, this government is on the move for Etobicoke yeah. North paralleling the, the member himself. Speaker, there's many, many things to talk about, including a $200 million expansion at Etobicoke General and more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, member Statements, the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I'd like to recognize Dr. James Gillies, who was born in Teeswater in 1924 to Dr. Milford Gillies and his wife Gladys. In fact, I used Mr. Gillis's home as a landmark to help people find the 6th of Col Ross so they can make their way to our farm. But back to James. James has had an immense impact in the worlds of academia, business, and politics. 
When James was 17, he attended the University of Western Ontario, where he majored in economics until World War II broke out, and he joined the RCAAF as an air crewman. Afterwards, he returned to finish his degree and would continue his academic career in the United States. In 1965, after serving as assistant dean at UCLA, he returned to Ontario to work at York University as the founding dean of the Faculty of Administrative Studies, now the Schulich School of Business. Today, the school has grown to more than 27,000 graduates, working in more than 90 countries worldwide, and is a testament to the far-reaching and lasting effect Mr. Gillis's legacy has had for 50 years later. In 1972, Mr. Gillis found himself on the campaign trail and was elected to its first term as the representative for the riding of Don Valley at the federal level. He would go on to serve a second term, and he also ran for the leadership of the Federal Conservative Party, but ultimately backed Joe Clark in the end. After serving as senior policy advisor to Prime Minister Joe Clark, he returned to the world of academics and was awarded the Order of Canada for his contributions to education. But with all his achievements, Speaker, Mr. Gillies was happiest to be known as just a boy from Teeswater who has had a chance to make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nickelville. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to draw attention to Camp Eagle Nest, a First Nation nonprofit organization located about two hours north of Sudbury, near the Benny Forest, in my riding in Nickelbelt. Camp Eagle's Nest organizes cultural and wilderness skill training camp for young people, mainly Aboriginal youth, from around the north. The future was looking bright for Camp Eagle's Nest until logging operations were started in the Benny Forest. Unknown to the local resident, the 2010 and 2020 Spanish River Phase II Forest Management Plan had not taken into account the residents and businesses operating in the area, and the area was giving up for logging. Camp Eagle Nest was simply overlooked, Speaker. I understand that sometimes mistakes happen, but it is up to the Ministry of Natural Resources to own up to their mistake. The area has a strong Aboriginal history. Clyde McNichol, a First Nation elder from Camp Eagle Nest, has century-long family ties to the area. With his wife, Barbara Nichol, they are trying to protect the trees in the area of his ancestral home and current business from lumbering. Forestry and related activities in the area have significantly infringed on Mr. McNichol's right to hunt, fish and gather. They now threaten his ability to use his camp as spiritual and cultural practice, including teaching traditional knowledge to youth. Mr. Speaker, the government and the MNR should admit the mistake and start trying to fix it. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. Last summer, Dun & Bradstreet showed us in precise numbers that our western Mississauga neighbourhoods of Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville led the city of Mississauga, the province of Ontario and the country of Canada in business growth and employment growth. Manufacturing has grown by more than 44 per cent in northwest Mississauga, 15 percentage points higher than the rest of the province and the rest of the country. Employment in Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville is up 21 per cent since 2014. Sales are up 13 per cent in the same period. Since the bottom of the recession in 2009, the number of businesses in the riding has grown an astonishing 64 per cent. Homegrown aerospace manufacturing heavyweight cyclone manufacturing is growing at 20 per cent per year. Multinational life sciences businesses Amgen, GSK, Contract Pharmaceuticals, Roche Canada and Patheon are bringing home high-wage, high-skill, full-time, challenging and interesting career opportunities. Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville are now a larger population and economic region than the province of PEI or the city of Kingston. Ontario's economic plan has worked for us in western Mississauga. Ontario's 2016-17 budget will do the same for communities all across Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member Seems, member from Lampton, Kent, Middlesex. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. In Lampton, Kent, Middlesex and in Sarnia, Lampton and across Ontario, the first crop of the year is being harvested. Over $50 million of maple syrup is produced in our province annually, and I'm proud to have many producers in my riding. These are mostly family-owned businesses that contribute not only to the local economy, but also to our communities. Pancake breakfasts in local churches and community centres, tours through sugar bushes and, of course, many maple syrup festivals 
all bring families and school classes out to enjoy the warm weather and some delicious maple syrup. It is a uniquely Canadian tradition. I want to congratulate Fort Rose Maple Company, McLaughlin Family Maple Syrup, Williamson Farms, the Lumsden Brothers, Eagleson Farms, Rolling Ridge, Ryan's Sweet Maple, Stanley and Clara Wartner, and Earl and Bill Elgie, all for my riding and what is shaping up to be another great season. Kate, Annie, and I always look forward to this time of year. I encourage everyone to visit their local sugar bush or maple syrup festival to learn more about this quintessential part of Ontario's heritage. Thank Fair you. Here. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on Friday night, I was pleased to attend the Royal Ottawa Inspiration Awards Gala that celebrates the exceptional individuals who have contributed to advancing the cause of mental health in our community and beyond. At the gala, we honoured and celebrated Gail Grass, author of Iris the Dragon, a series of children's book, books aimed at starting conversations about mental health. Psychiatrist Dr. Abigail Ortiz, who is researching mood fluctuations in patients suffering from depression and bipolar disorder with the goal of being able to predict and prevent major manic and depressive episodes. Men's health advocate Jean-Francois Claude, who has campaigned for Men's Mental Health Day as an annual lead-up to Father's Day. Peer support worker and educator Tyrone Gamble, who has drawn on his own experience with bipolar disorder and psychosis to help others. Ruth Maxwell, a champion, advocate, and fundraiser for mental health in our community. And Jason Pham, a student who uses his own experience with PTSD to edu educate others. We also honoured Margaret Trudeau for her efforts to break down the stigma that often surrounds mental health. Mr. Speaker, all of these individuals display courage and conviction. And I want to thank all of them for inspiring us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. thank you. Further member statements. The member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. I want to rise today to highlight the importance of page 71 of this year's budget. The line most enjoy reads, subject to agreement with freight and rail partners, extension of go rail service to Bowmanville and Niagara. Here, here. Yeah. Here, here. Now, now, while I'm thrilled for the number of, for the number, for the members of from St. Catherine and Niagara Falls, for this news, I am overjoyed for the residents of Durham and all the wonderful things that it means for our wonderful community. These residents of my riding have been asking for this extension for quite some time, and I am proud that their hard work may pay off now. I have been working tirelessly to make sure their voices are heard. The Minister of Transportation knows this well, and I am glad that we are moving forward with a project that we know will bring access to growth in, in Curtis and Bowmanville and the, the, the Durham region in general. Speaker, I look forward to a future agreement with our freight rail partners, and I thank the residents of Durham for bringing me to Queen's Park to champion this project, which I will continue to do. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you all members for their statements. It's now time for